Let's oh yeah, let's play this clip. You guys remember this one? This is an oldie but a goodie. I've been going through some of the archives, right? Going trawling through the Fire and the Kids sub for some old clips and shit. And I stumbled across this doozy. I stumbled across this absolute doozy. I'm sure some of you have seen it. It features the great Joy Koi. And it's an amazing clip because this was back when Brendan used to parrot all the things he heard from like Rogan, Joey Diaz, blah, blah, blah. So one of the things those guys used to say, I think Joey Diaz used to say it actually, Joey Diaz and Rogan had this stance about local radio where they were like, they'd much rather focus on their show instead of doing local radio because I think at that point in their career, they already were quite successful. So they're like, oh, you probably know I'm here anyway. So I'd much rather focus on my show to give you the best show possible so you come back to my next one as opposed to waking up at 6 a.m. and doing a radio show that no one's going to listen to which makes sense. But I do remember also Joey Diaz and people saying that local radio and shit was really important to their come up when they were first becoming a comedian, right? And getting a name out there because those local shows, you never know who's listening. And sometimes you can end up getting fans for life because of that. Sometimes the person that works there could end up hooking up with something else, whatever, because it's all media entertainment shit. So actually when you're in a come up, it's actually a good tactic to actually be on it. Now, in this particular clip, Brenda decides to rabbit or parrot one of the lines he's heard from Rogan or Joey Diaz about not doing local radio and it's a waste of time. And then Joe Coy absolutely schools him and lets him know, no, like, I'm bigger than you. I sell out theatres and I still do fucking radio because it's, why not? It's fucking free promo. Why the fuck wouldn't I want to do it? And Brendan obviously ends up kind of, you know, acquiescing and agreeing because I think this is also the point where Brennan was obsessed with tickets. So he kept getting Joy Coy on the show, even though he's not that funny. He sells a bunch of tickets, right? He's very popular within his community. The people that like watching this shit, I think he's kind of Filipino or something. But he's also just a funny guy, I guess. People like him. So Brennan was obsessed with like getting people on that. So tickets and trying to learn business and stuff, which is funny because never at one point in these conversations is he ever talking about jokes and how to be funnier it's always about business stuff like marketing promotion all this sort of nonsense but it's never about actually being funny which is or being funnier so let's listen to this clip and let's see joey coy call out Shaw for thinking he's too big for radio this is a fucking legendary one really really good actually let's check this out uh with my with my career is uh yeah i'm sold out but i'm still gonna do radio you're still going to do press. Oh, are you kidding me? Radio is king. To this day, it's still king. Interesting. Not, oh, to this so audio isn't king. Audio isn't king. Radio is king. Big up Joy Coy. Big up Joe Coy. Actually, he's coming to the UK soon, isn't he? Should I go and watch him? I think Joe Coy is coming to the UK soon. I'm pretty sure I saw I saw something. He's, on, he's in the UK. Maybe I'll go and watch him. Maybe I'll actually go this time. 3rd of May. Oh, am I even here? Damn. Oh, okay. Maybe I have to go third of May. I think that's is that is that next week? Oh no, it's the following week. I think following week. I might have to go. Forty-seven quid. Oof. Well, he's not. You know, it's not sold out. Sold out. So you know, not the best brains of the business. Let's let's do one ticket. Let's see how much they're going for. Forty-seven. Are all these available then? All these are available. Where's the stage over there? So he sold out quite a bit, to be fair. I don't know if this all. This is this is pretty good for Joe Coy, isn't it? To be fair, because the O2 Arena is not. That's not a small venue, isn't it? What's the O2 capacity? O2 capacity. What is it? Twenty thousand. God damn, Joe Coy. He sold out all of these in grey. The only ones available are the blue ones. The middle section here in front of the stage is completely gone. Only these on the sides are, are available. It's 180, 58 there, 58 there, 47 towards the back. Okay, I'll probably do one of these ones, right? These 58s. That's probably the best ones to get. Wow, bro. He sold a bunch of tickets. That is pretty good, bro. That's a horrible seat in it. Sit right there. Two seats in. Those seats there, all the other ones are taken. Fuck. Okay, I'm going to have to take a look at this, actually. Joyco is actually performing in London. That actually might be something I might have to check out. I'm not going to lie. This is actually looking like a good little moment. I'm not going to lie. Let me actually save that on my thing so I've got it. Um, This one, right? He's performing in London, actually. Um, Events. What is it? Shh. 
Or let, is it song kick? What do I need it for? I need song kick. There we go, song kick. Because I use use song kick as my use. Oh, it's not. I'm not even signed in. Okay, cool. Fuck it. I'll do it another time. But anyway, Joko is coming to London very soon. Cannot wait. I'm definitely gonna go check it out. I'm definitely gonna go check it out. Let's continue to the video. Day, because it just is like there's still that you know. The Uche, I'm just gonna buy tickets and not go. I know I'll probably no, no. I'm definitely gonna go. I'm definitely gonna go. I'm definitely gonna go. Third of May is not too far. That's literally two weeks time. I, I want to go and make a review. I actually, I need to go. To, I need to do like joke world. I need to do like in review in situ stuff. Joke world goes to I, here. I am at the mothership. Here I am at Dave Chappelle's comedy club. I need to be like in there. Do you know what I mean? I have to be in there. In there. I don't know who said that. I don't know. But anyway, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be. Because I would argue there's a podcast reason. is king. Huh? I, I, well, 100% podcast is king. Who said podcast is king? That was when the bubble was super big, in it? The bubble was huge. And these guys saw no end to the money they were making. Podcast is king, you know? Podcast is king. <laughs> what? <laughs> but you gotta, you still gotta face the fact that there's two, three million people listening to LA radio right now in the morning. At least. At least. Uh, at least. So why aren't you talking to them? That's live, man. Like you, that Look at Brendan being stumped. You can tell he doesn't think about the things he says. He just rabbits what other people say. Because you could throw back to Joe as much Joe Joe, as much as he's right about what he's saying. I guess it depends on how you value your time. I think if you're an established comedian, maybe going on morning radio, all of the morning radio is probably not a good idea. You're probably better off just like, you know, promoting your show on the biggest podcast in that local area. I know Rory and Moore did it. Rory and Moore did it pretty well. When Rory and Moore came to London or came to the UK, they did tons of podcasts. In My cat Steve's B-Day is Tom Rowe. He's turning seven. <laughs> Big up, bro. Happy birthday to your cat, my friend. If you've got a cat, hopefully it's a homeless cat. Happy birthday to your cat. Um, let's get fucking, let's get party emojis in the chat for your fucking cat. So big up your fucking cat. Party emojis in the chat for your fucking cat, my friend, bro. Happy fucking birthday to your lovely feline friend. Let's get those party emojis in the chat for this person's cat. <laughs> Um, yeah, I guess if you're Joe Coy, I think if you're an established, if you're an established, 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 established comedian, going on all of the fucking podcasts probably isn't a good idea. Uh, maybe just, or sorry, all of the morning radio shows, maybe do the podcast instead. Rory and Moore did that really well when they came to the UK. They went to, I think they toured around the UK, maybe some places up north. And I remember them doing a bunch of podcasts local. So obviously to drive traffic and to get people to buy more tickets and get them familiar with the local environment. And obviously it also worked as a good way for them to kind of figure out what podcast they wanted to open for them because they had openers. So they have podcasts come in and do their little things. And that would obviously bring a lot of locals out as well. So I think that's obviously smart. What Joe Coy is saying is really smart too, because that's just like whatever opportunity you have to promote your shit, do it. So thinking you're bigger than radio is stupid because, you know, there's, especially in America, I think radio in America must be really king because you guys drive everywhere and everybody drives, right? You guys drive everywhere and everyone drives. So you're spending a lot of time in your fucking cars. So to just completely ignore radio is quite dumb. So big up Joe for schooling Brendan here. That's your chip. That's your chip. So, so when you do, when why wouldn't you go on there and talk about your podcast? That's you. That's you assuming that everybody in los angeles knows about this show that's 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 a that's a brave assumption that's but i think he does feel that way this is also see joe is forgetting who he's speaking to look at brennan's face already he's kind of scrunching up his face you know he's receptive but not really receptive joe is forgetting that this is brendan in that era when do you remember brendan in the era when he used to always say oh i went to starbucks and the barista recognized me and asked me about the fights he was acting as if like he was walking around LA like he was fucking Tom Cruise. Like everyone was asking him questions about the UFC, about fight cards, about this drama, that drama. So I do think there was a time where Brendan honestly did think he was the biggest podcast in LA. It was probably him and Rogan. He probably thought him and Rogan were number two, one and two in terms of top two podcasts in the world or in LA for sure. So that's probably why he doesn't want to go on radio. It's like they all know who I am. It's like, bruh. Nobody knows who you are. You want to win more. It's a dumb assumption. It is. Yeah. It's bad. But it's you're not ego. dumb. No. You're not. 
But you got to understand, there's a reason why Big Boy is still fucking badass out here. There's a reason why Jay Cruz has a show. That's why the Woody show is syndicated. That's why Bob and Tom have... How could Brandon do radio? I can barely understand him without captions. <laughs> oh, that's amazingly true, Fiat. Oh, my God. Can you imagine Marble Mouth Brendan at 7 a.m. in the morning? You already see how fucked up he is when he does short show. Can you imagine Marble Mouth Brendan at 7 a.m. in the morning? Whew. Town about radio. B. Howard is still funnier than both these MFs, even as an old man, let exactly. alone back in the day. It's exactly Tom about. I love Tom about. Tom about. I love Tom. Whenever, whenever I hear Tom about, my mouth immediately does. My mouth widens. Tom about. My mouth almost widens. Tom about. Tom about. But yeah, big up, big up, NJ Ranger. Tom about. And those 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 shows and those platforms so, still exist so, for a reason. So when you go into a city like I'm in Nashville next week, when when I go to Nashville, that's when do press up, and I always go, "Who is it? What do they want me to do?" Bro, you should you play every. I will play soccer. Imagine back. I'd love to hear the difference of Brendan back then to now from agents. Imagine the hell he was giving agents, acting like a diva. Who are they? What do they want to talk to me about? This is also back in the day when he didn't like he didn't accept interview requests from quote unquote smaller podcasts. Now he's going on podcasts with like barely five hundred fucking views, and sitting down with people. Back in the day, he used to act like, "Yeah, I'm not going to go on your podcast; it's too small." Like, imagine, look at the change. God damn, how the mighty have fallen. Mom channel. I will go to uh, the pop radio. I will do anything. I'll go to a talk show. I don't give a shit. Like talk to them, do do me. They love you if you did yeah. that. That's a great relationship. You know what's funny? He's saying that it's true because wasn't that part of um Tom Segura's law? Tom Segura's fame building was was because he would he'd go to these random local TV shows and play one of his characters that he does on the show, Your Mom's House. When it used to be funny, so that kind of like fucking around on those type of shows made him into a bit of a legend online even bobby lee remember bobby lee he'd go on those random tv shows hugging up the women you know playing up the fucking you know innocent creepy type of dude persona thing mark norman the same thing going on there and ribbing and just you know razzing the fucking host that sort of stuff that in the moment probably feels like a waste of time when that stuff lands on youtube it then becomes a whole nother thing brendan should know that right after you cut up the clips and you upload them and share them you get like millions of views and shit right <laughs> to have interesting like how interesting. cool is it to go into a place and go i'm sold out i'm just here to say hi like yeah. that's cool yeah and they love you and they appreciate you for that and you i had three shows at the wind that were sold out six months in advance i i my shows were in june they were sold out in january i still did a full media run in vegas as if the show only had two tickets sold to to and then you push everything i did every news outlet media radio everything in Vegas, I'm listening. and I and I did not have to be there. I'm listening. Man. Yeah, I'll do that from now on. Yeah, yeah man. And you sell, you sell more tickets than anybody I know. But you got to mean. See, you see what I mean. He's only listening. He's only giving Joe Joe Coy respect because he's probably got a really shiny what because Joe at this time was obviously making a lot of money. He still does now, but probably back then even more. He probably have he probably one of those simple rich guys, right? He looks very plain. But you know little details. He's got a really expensive watch on. Maybe he's got a Laura Piana polo. Maybe he pulled up to the office in a Bentley. That's why Brendan is being so fucking submissive and listening to him like an elder statement because he makes money, not because of any other reason. Pretty wild, isn't it? If you don't make money, you don't exist in Brendan's world. Maintain that. And, you know, and, and, and like I said, not everybody knows that you, just because you're sold out doesn't mean everybody knows you're there. Oh, no. You ever leave a market I'm and they get a tweet going, hey, when are you coming to Nashville? It's like, motherfucker, I was just more? there. Oh, dude, that breaks my heart. Yeah. When someone goes, job, when, the f when are you coming to Indianapolis? I'm like, dude, I was there last weekend. And, and the reason why is because you thought the pod let them know. Here's the other. But if you would have done. You're right. Here's the other thing. So when I was in Indianapolis, um, I did. Um, this like inter radio interview in ESPN, but it's a local uh, like Indianapolis uh, ESPN station. I didn't want to do it. I kept blowing it off. And my brother's like, "Hey, man, they really want you to do this. Just do it." It's like, "All right, I do it." The guy was great. Really, you know, a lot of these uh, radio DJs been doing. It. Actually, gonna I'm actually gonna make a note of that. See if I can find some of these local radio appearances from Brendan. Maybe we should try and dig them out try and scour the web and try and see these local appearances from him. There might be some gold in there.
forever. Yeah. Really good dude. I get done. And uh, I get a text from the club. goes, whatever you did, fucking move, move some tickets. Yeah. And my brother texts me. and goes, man, so many guys that I work with just heard you on the radio. I'm like, what? That, that shit still works. Yes. It's, I, a, it's not that. It's I didn't not come dead. Up with them. I, 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 also, Brendan's completely missing what Joe is saying to him. Joe isn't saying go on local radio to sell tickets. He's saying just go on local radio, just speak to your fans, get your name out there, just shoot the shit with them. People will people like that sort of shit, and maybe that could result in tickets. He's not said he, he obviously mentioned hey if you sell out it's good to turn up, but he's mostly mentioning it as like an exercise in humbleness, an exercise in like you know keeping your ego in check, an exercise in just being a you know. But Brendan is looking at it like. This is another opportunity to sell tickets. Sell tickets, like, bro. No, everything has to have a monetary gain or like a you know whatever at the end of it. So you could just be doing it just for shits and giggles. Let me just go on this guy's show that's got ten listeners just for the fucking fun of it. Brendan said, "Nah, I'm only gonna go in there if it's gonna make me money." I came up with it in a different kind of like a podcast is king. You don't you don't need to do this other stuff. Pod- Podcast is king is fucking hilarious. This is where the audio is king started from. He used to say podcast is king, not audio is king. Cast is king, but so is radio. No, what I'm saying is it's that that's another platform that's still. It's the same thing, really, isn't it? Podcasting radio is the same thing. That's what he's trying to say. Radio is probably more commercial, more you know, because it's obviously accessible to most people. Not accessible, but you know, people are mostly used to it. But it's the same thing. Like, why wouldn't, if you can do a podcast, why can't you just do a radio spot? I guess radio spot is different because you have to go there in person, blah, 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 I understand. But sometimes you have to call in or wake up really early, but fucking hell, Papa, man. Like, you can't understand. Like, he's really struggling to understand this point. Exists. Yeah, you're right. And, and, and like, <laughs> yeah, podcast is king, but like, dude, morning TV is still the shit. Yeah. Everyone, like, morning news has is, it on. KTLA. Are- Good point. Big up pity. Good fucking point. Podcast is king of calling, killing comedy. Podcast is king of killing comedy. That is so fucking accurate, especially for nowadays. Ironically enough, podcasting made most of these middle, average, rubbish comedians multi-millionaires. It changed the, the scope of their lives. It harnessed, it put the control of their careers back into their hands, right? Because a lot of the comedians say, they were kind of at the behest of like agents and studios and networks. Podcasting gave these guys control again of their own future. It kind of secured their long-term future. It allowed them to support their family, to finally go on that honeymoon, to get married, to have another kid, to buy another car, buy another house. But it also, they paid a huge price because across the board, all of their stand-ups have got worse. Every person that has a prominent podcast at the moment who's also a stand-up comedian, the stand-up comedy is definitely worse for it. So podcast is king. Podcast did make these people kings and queens, but it definitely has done irreversible damage to their stand-up. Because now most of us think most of these guys are fucking awful when it comes to stand-up. And a lot of it has to do with them wasting, you'd imagine, a lot of that comedic power, energy, karma, whatever, on podcast and not leaving it for the stage. Or maybe we're so overexposed to them on the podcast, we get used to them, we realize it's not funny. So when they get on stage, the jokes don't hit the same. Are you kidding me? Like, you should be on KTLA. You should be like, talk to them. You're going to hate me. You want to hear this? What? For KTLA, for promotion, my special. You didn't do it? I pretended I was sick. I'm pretending you're on TV. I'm pretending you're looking at me right now. What the fuck are you doing? I know. I know. That, dude. I know. Yes, you do that. I should Yes, you talk this. How many times has Brendan in his career pretended he's sick and not done things? I bet you it must be the double digits. The amount of times Brendan has re- pretended to be ill and he's not actually ill. Because I think he, rem- he, he, he admitted that about COVID. He didn't believe in COVID. He didn't believe in masks. He was very anti-COVID, very anti-mask when it came out. He thought he was an essential worker. Comedy was the most important thing that people needed. He still went on tours despite all the fucking mandates and restrictions. But he still used COVID for his benefit. When he didn't want to do a gig, when he didn't sell tickets, he'd say he got COVID. (laughs) I would love to know the amount of times Brendan cancelled gigs 
because he said he got COVID. I bet you if the number's high, high, high. Sam Rubin. I should have got a call from Joe Coy. Yeah, man. I, I, that's to me, and that's in anything you do, though, to just assume that mm. everybody knows your business. No, oh, no. I have, I have a, I have a, I have a billboard up, so everyone should come to my restaurant. No, man, you need to go out there and tell everybody you have a restaurant. No, I'm with you. Exactly. I don't assume everybody. I'm not that naive. No, I my know you're not. not that big. No, I'm, you, well, my thing is, I'm, no, definitely your ego is that big. Bre Brendan's ego for sure is that big. He definitely thinks everybody knows who he is for sure. Like. It's not my demographic. They're older. And isn't that what you that's want? That's you do it. Yeah, you're right. That's the that. Hold on. He doesn't want older people at his shows. Who does that? No wonder. Look at that smile. No wonder he failed at comedy. He's choosing people. He's picking. No, his preference of people who should attend these shows is based on age. What the fuck? Surely if you're putting on a show, you want anybody and everybody to come to your show. You don't really care who they are. Legs, no arms, no eyes, tall, short, fat, small, whatever. Please come to my show. Please buy tickets. Please sit in those seats. Please fill this bitch out. Please buy drinks. Please buy plates and plates full of fucking tater tots and chicken strips and fries and hot dogs and burgers so that the club can see that i sell this place out you all buy stuff you all eat stuff and you all tip well please do that so i can get more bookings why are you gonna be like oh yeah no one over the age of 42 please nobody over 55 please actually can we get no brothers and when i mean no brothers can we get no blacks it's like what <laughs> That yeah, man, you're you're you're, you're right. eating your words right now. That's not my demo. What the fuck? What is your demo? Your demo is anything that anyone that likes to laugh. There is no age. Yeah. What is your demo? Anybody without a brain. <laughs> what is your demo? <laughs> Undiagnosed CTE victims. What is your demo? <laughs> oh. Yeah, you're right. There is no race. Like, I, I sold out in Singapore. How the fuck did that happen? Well, it's not no, I'm just saying. And you can too. Yeah, for sure. Oh, look at the racism. That's funny. That, that, that's, oh, that's, you know what? That was actually funny. I'm going to give Brendan credit. That was actually fucking funny. I sold out in Singapore. How the fuck that happened? Brendan, come on. <laughs> that was actually funny. I'm not going to lie. Go down to Brendan. That's the one. That, oh. that, yeah, man, you're you're, oh, you're, you're right. eating your words right now. That's that not my demo. Really what the fuck? Funny. What is your demo? Your demo is anything that anyone that likes to laugh. There is no age. Yeah, you're right. There is no race. <laughs> like I, I sold out in Singapore. How the fuck did that happen? Well, no, I'm just saying. And you. <laughs> uh, that was so good, bro. I sold out of Singapore. How did that happen? Well, come on, you yeah. know. You know how that happened. <laughs> oh, one more time. That was really funny. I actually laughed at that. There is no age. Yeah, you're right. There is no race. Like, I, I sold out in Singapore. How the fuck did that happen? Well. No, I'm just saying. And you can too. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Like See, He didn't take the joke. He's trying to tell him seriously. He's trying to laugh. Chin laughter. Because Chin is fucking... Chin is actually one of the biggest cucks for Brendan. Maybe even more so than Brian Callen. I'm trying to see it. He's really hitched his wagon to Brendan. If Brendan goes down, he goes down too, I guess. Good. But Chin is really in it for the long run. Like, like you should always look at somebody and not hate on them, but be inspired by them. Like, yo, that dude sold out an arena. I can sell an arena. 100%. 100%. 100%. Yeah, 100%. Can we talk about being funny, please? Can both of you guys talk about getting on stage, perfecting your funny, you know, recording your sets, looking up, you know, re-listening to shit. I don't know. When is the last time you heard a comedian talk about that? Oh, shit, I was on stage and recorded my set. The gaps between the words were a bit too long. I pronounced this word a bit weird. I swapped out a certain phrase. I put the start of the story at the end and then the end at the start. I changed the names around. You know, when do you, what, you don't, they don't talk about that anymore. They just talk about fucking marketing, clips to put out, 
crowd shitty crowd work where they berate some guy for having like red hair it's like bruh always use that as inspiration oh let, let yeah. the haters hate because that's only going to feed your fire bro. yeah anyone that hates is just going to be only for the only person that gets affected by shouting out hatred or 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 throwing hate your way that they're the only ones that suffer because they're using all their energy to promote your product yeah that's how you got to look at shit don't ever think of like yo this dude's hating on me that's gonna affect my business no it's not no. it's gonna help your business what? Look at Joy. Look at Joe, Joy. Look at, I can't, why I keep saying Joy? Look at Joe giving Brendan an absolute schooling on like how to deal with haters, how to promote himself. And it's just going in and out, out, in, out, in through one ear, out of the other. Brendan never got it. He never understood how to harness the hate for his benefit. They don't matter. They do not matter. They're homeless cats. It's like a homeless person critiquing my art, which is fucking wild to say. He thinks he creates art. It's fucking crazy. The only art he really created was that fucking truck flip. That was really artful in in his own way. But yeah, what a hilarious guy. I, I, because you're still, that guy is giving other people, that guy is using his platform to to give them a, 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 a chance to figure out whether or not they hate you to as well. make their own assumptions. That's all he's yeah. doing. He's going, hey, you guys, I hate that guy. What are your thoughts? Probably about 80% of you are going to be like, I kind of like him. So thanks for telling me. Yeah, thanks. And man. then the other 20% is like, yo, I'm with you. And those dickheads you don't want anyway. I remember I asked you, I went, I went hey, Ham, how do you deal with hate? <laughs> he's such a baby, isn't it? How do you deal with hate? It's not, honestly, surely at some point you have to look at the hate and think to yourself, they all can't just hate me for no reason. There has to be some morsel, some iota, some hint, some pinch of truth to what they say. You figure out what it is, and then you know what you do when you're smart. You lean into that. Whatever they don't like, you start to lean into it properly until it becomes very obvious that you're playing it up. And then guess what? The haters disappear because it's not fun anymore because they know you're aware of it. But instead, this motherfucker... You know, thin skin McGee over here. How do you deal with hate? Bruh, you're a former UFC fucking fighter. You're a former fucking heavyweight. It's not that deep. People are taking the piss out of your pronunciation. Guess what? Pronounce better, bitch. If you can't pronounce better, lean into it. And start pronouncing everything terribly. You know? Do that. And then see how far your career goes. God damn it, bro. And you just sent me a picture of a racehorse with blinders. Yeah. On. <laughs> Big up Cooper T. Cooper TX. Don't give him hope. Don't, sorry, don't give him tips. Bruh, it's too late for that, man. He doesn't like... I've said it before. There's no hope for this guy. He's not listening to anything. He's already fucking... What is he? Early 40s? Three kids married? He's not going to change anyway. Even if even if he got the tips given to him in a fucking 600-page dossier. Dossier. Dossier? Dossier. He would never fucking read it. Even if he sent it to him in one page, he wouldn't fucking read it. He doesn't think there's anything fundamentally wrong with him. Which is obviously the best bit because that's what makes him a great low cow. Lack of self awareness is the number one ingredient to top low cows. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I literally. He goes. I, How I do you saved do that hate? picture? My phone. Did you really? Oh yeah. Because it's real. I always ask people way more successful than me. Like, how do you deal with like haters and the activity? And just I always ask people way more successful than me because the people that are way more successful to me are the only people that can talk to me. People that say that sort of stuff are the worst, isn't it? I surround myself with winners. All my boys are tigers. Shut up. Just, I mean, he didn't say anything. He just put, sent me a picture of a fucking That's race or these a two A horse with on. fucking a race horse. And the horse is like fucking <laughs> with blinders. That motherfucker yeah. only has one thing in front of him. The fucking prize yep. in front of him. Yep. And all your hate. What's the prize? Being funny or selling tickets? Let's see what they say. Haters are the, are the people sitting in the stands yep. betting against you. Yep. Horse number five is gonna suck. That, that look at him. Look at the legs on the horse number five. But how? That's and the horse number five doesn't even see them. Yeah. Brendan doesn't like it though. He doesn't want to have even people betting against him. That's not nice. That's not nice. It's like, bro, he doesn't want him to exist. If it was up to Brendan, he would definitely press the button to exterminate all haters. If that meant gassing them, if that meant nuclear bombs on their homes, if that meant poisoning them, if that meant hanging them, he'd definitely press that button. He'd be pressing it like that, especially if he got to unique. <laughs> you break that fucking button. <laughs> care. He doesn't give a fuck. He doesn't care about their opinions. He's going to show them that I'm going to win. And that's you. You're the fucking racehorse with the blinders on, bro.
Yeah. And remember, everyone in the stands wishes they were a fucking racehorse. Correct. I love this cope as well. Everybody hates on you because they wish they could be you. This is such a funny cope because I swear the internet has got to a place nowadays where surely people know, people just troll for trolling's sake because it's fun. Don't people realize that? There are people out there who just troll for the sport of it because they know it gets under people's skin. They know it can get a reaction out of people. That's what they live for. There's no it, there's no I, bit of them that wants to be on the stage themselves, that wants to be a stand-up comedian, that wants to be friends with Rogan. Another key ingredient, doing nothing wrong and everything correct. Yeah. Shout out Ricky Picture. Exactly, 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 exactly. We got NJ Range, exactly. That's DSP. I did everything right. I did not. I did nothing wrong. I did everything correct. Huh? Um, w w Wings of Redemption, same one. Wings of Redemption, same place. Wings of Redemption. I did everything right. I did nothing wrong. Boogie 2988. I did everything right. I did nothing wrong. All of these guys are all the same. There's nothing in them that ever says, hey, you're the common denominator. Every time things go wrong, you're one of the people involved. Could it maybe be you? No, it's not me. Circumstances. It's a society. It's the government. It's YouTube. It's, Bethesda, it's Bethesda's fault. Right? <laughs> PlayStation fucked me. You know? The PC fucked me. The controller fucked me. Kelly fucked me. It's fucking Keemstar's fault. <laughs> it's Tevin's fault. Always somebody else's fault. Bobby Lee fucked me. Correct. Everyone wants to be the right Hands person. down. Yep. Everyone in that audience wishes they were on stage. Yep. That's why they're paying to come see you. Correct. Oh my God. That is insane. Do these comedians honestly think everybody that watched stand-up comedy wants to be a stand-up comedian? What? <sighs> Surely you have to know by this point, anybody that goes to watch you is actually your fan. I don't think you're going to get many haters in a the crowd. They're actually fans of you. Percentage of those people would... Is it possible they could be, you know, aspiring stand-up comedians? Maybe. But I'd say a stand-up comedy show is probably the closest thing to a safe space. Because no one that isn't not a fan is going to make an effort to buy a ticket to go and see you just to hate. It's not going to happen. Let's be real. So I don't know why Joe is saying that. Like... Huh? If you're a stand-up comedian, you don't go watch loads of shows anyway. You're spending loads of time on stage. That's what you should be doing. You should be doing loads of open mics. You should be fucking perfecting your, your craft. You shouldn't be on stage listening to other comedians because that also might fuck up your comedy. You might start copying them, you know, um, unconsciously. So this is a weird, just a, like, what? So everybody that goes to a festival also wants to be in a band. Is that what you're trying to say? Uh, No. Hands down, you won already. It doesn't matter. Like, and that's like I always say. Like, I, I always say this. Like, it doesn't matter what you do in life, man. Like, there's haters in every aspect of what. You, oh, in, everything. In, everything. I'm at, I'm at, but again, that's the thing, Cooper. I don't even think a lot of people hate them. That's the thing. I think people miss. I don't know. I don't. I don't think a lot of people hate them. People just enjoy. Like, I can see some hate with some people. Some locals get hate. Like. You know, I could say definitely hand on heart, like, you know, DSP and those type of people, like, they definitely get hate. I'm definitely one of them, right? You live to see the end of DSP, right? When he gets fucking demonetized from YouTube and he's not able to pay his bills and shit and he has to get a regular job. That's how the person like, you actually want to see suffer. Um, big up. Um, Stand up comedians must remember if they were born 300 years ago, they would have been dancing jesters. Exactly. Exactly, Fyodor. Exactly. No more than fucking dancing gestures. But yeah, big up Theodore. What I was saying was like, I don't think a lot of these guys get hate. Some of them just, it's just fun to laugh at. A lot of guys that laugh or point and laugh at Bert, I don't think they wish they could also be 50-year-old functioning alcoholics. They just find it incredible that this guy exists. Like, wow, there's this human being who's this age, who's a grown-up with a family, who's able to like live like this. Like, It's just funny to take the piss out of it because it's so fucking absurd. But that's the thing. These guys don't realize how absurd they are, weirdly enough, which is strange, isn't it? Imagine not realizing how absurd you come across to regular people. You think you're completely normal and there should be no reason why people should maybe hate on you. It's like, mm, you, there's a lot of reasons why people should not should hate on you. You're really easy to hate. 
just for your mere existence. But hey, what do I know? Be at your workplace. Dude, imagine, oh, for sure. But imagine Kevin Durant. Yeah. Best basketball player on earth, maybe the most skilled. Hey, and, and you know I'm biased. I'm from Seattle. We drafted that guy. Correct. So, I, like, I'm in love with Kevin. I, he's, he's my favorite player. Yeah. And think about Kevin Durant. He's my favorite player. I have black friends. We, come on, Brendan. You don't have to convince us. Really? Kevin Durant's your favorite player? Sure. The hate got so bad, he created fake burner accounts. Yeah. To roast people online. Yeah. He didn't want to deal with it. Mm. That's crazy. Dude. I love that guy. Yeah, yeah, I love him. I love that guy. And we, I got a Brooklyn jersey coming. <laughs> He wanted he wanted to hate he wanted to hate so bad but Joe wasn't dunking into it but it's hate. Got got to get the Brooklyn. God, God man, you know that it's. I love how he laughed at that. By the way, the Brook of course the Brooklyn jersey shows how much of a fan you are. By the way, where are all those jerseys? Are they all in a bin? Are they still in the cupboard? I wonder where all those jerseys are. When he was cosplaying as a sports fan and wearing different team jerseys and jumping on bandwagons every week, I wonder where those jerseys are. This one particular one he wore that was really nice. He wore this one that was from a baseball team that like won something. It was like a cream one. It was like, a, do you guys remember that jersey that Brendan wore? I think it was like a Mexican team, a Latino team or one of them teams that did really well. It was like a cream jersey. It was really fucking nice. Really, I think it was like cream or something. It was limited edition. They didn't make many of them. I think it was like a commemorate something they did recently. I think it was like for a Latino baseball team or something like that. I don't know, but regardless, who cares? The absolute, you know, if anyone should know, you're you're an athlete. One thing I hate is a, a guy that's... Oh, yeah, Cream is part... Let's see. Um, limited edition Padres jersey. Because I thought that was really fucking nice. Let's see if I can find it. Yeah, that's the one. I think it was that Cream one. I think that's the one. That's the one with the Padres in the front. I found it. Big up... Uh, who said that? I think Joe from MIA, big up. I think that was you. I think it was this one. I think the one that Brennan got was this one. That one there with the Padres on the front. Yeah, that's it. The 40th anniversary one. There we go. Padres 40th. I've, I really like this. This is one of my favorite ones he actually wore. I'm not going to lie. Anniversary jersey. I don't know. I really like I think, yeah, he definitely got this one. Oh, is it 50th anniversary? Whatever. 50th, 40th. Who cares? <laughs> 50th 40th same thing maybe it was 50th maybe it was that one I don't know one of them anyway was it Serp okay people are saying Serpentine was it Serpentine's jersey maybe it was this yeah maybe oh yeah maybe it was this you're right I think it might have been this actually I think it might have been this let's see let's just write and Brendan Let's see if we got anything here. Let's write serpentine to this. Let's see. Okay, nothing. Cool. Maybe it was that. I think it was that though. <laughs> oh. You remember this era? Do you guys remember this era? Do you guys remember this era? Man, oh man, the thick boy era. What happened to this? Big up. I believe KD is Bappa's fave NBA player because you's that is the gayest, most lame bad wagon player to be a fan of. Oh, yeah, of course, of course, of course, 100%. Because he's a bandwagon jumper too, isn't it? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. That makes that, that makes a lot of sense. Big up you. Big up, big up, Assad. I appreciate you. Do you guys remember when Brendan wouldn't have Chappelle on the website? He took everybody's pictures, but he didn't put Chappelle up on the store. Maybe because he was too black or something, or he thought he was ugly. Do you guys remember that? They took pictures for the website, but then Brendan didn't put up Chappelle's face, or I think he cropped his face out or something. Do you guys remember that? <laughs> Crop out the uglies. Fucking brutal. I think he cropped out Chappelle's face because he didn't want him on the store. <laughs> oh. But yeah, this, this, is a, this, is a, this is the jersey. That's the one, yeah. Okay, what is the serpent? How does d back what's that serpentine nike city what is this about it's fucking lovely and i wonder how much this goes for how do you team pay tribute what's this festive music set is a mood outside of the chase field on monday before the arizona diamondbacks fell short donning team colors members of the phoenix area mexican tamba was that tamboraza performed the nel ni el diario ni el dala oh fuck off okay we're not gonna fucking read that then 
go away. I'm not fucking disabling shit, you bitch. Cool. That's the jersey, though. That's the one. That's a really nice one. That is really fucking nice. I really like that jersey. Me want that. The MLB Diamondbacks. It's fucking lovely, isn't it? It's really nice there. Look, a couple of baddies there wearing them. Oop, not baddies. They're kiddies. Let's take that back. Kiddies, kiddies, kiddies. Ha ha. Not baddies. Kiddies. Ha 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 ha. They're the baddies. Phew. Adults there. We got some adults. We nearly got ourselves crystalline. We nearly got ourselves crystalline there. There's the baddies. Adults. 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 <laughs> Adults, adults. <laughs> Diddy Zinger. Nah, let's not do that, Dark Web Jack. <laughs> Diddy Zinger. Diddy Zinger. Oh, the alarms. <laughs> oh, we nearly got in trouble there. We nearly got in trouble. Anyway, let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back. We did that. We did that. We did that. We did that. Anyway, let's continue there. Finished. Oh, that. <laughs> adults. <laughs> uh, the police emojis is fucking hilarious. Oh, big up everybody. I appreciate all of you. <laughs>